Welcome to Happy News Network, the mini-sode. We're here to brighten your week while you take a break from doom scrolling. I'm Shayna. And I'm Kristen. So Shayna, October has been Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, and our next guest is a lovely, talented, and hilarious actress. She's also a breast cancer survivor. You've probably seen her in multiple Broadway shows and national tours. I am very lucky to call her a friend. Please welcome Terry Kelly. Hi, Terry. Hello. Hello. Hi. How's it, hi there. How's it going? Oh, it's going. You know, here we are. <laughs> here we are in the pandemic 2020. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Terry, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and your life on stage? Oh, gosh, sure. Um, well, I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin, and now I live in Brooklyn, uh, New York. Um, I've been here for the whole whole pandemic. But um, yeah, I grew up um, in Wisconsin, very shy, very, um, I don't know. Yeah, I was just very shy. And, and once I got into theater, um, I kind of came out of my shell and uh, decided I wanted to do this for a living. So I started performing professionally at 21. And by the time I was 24, I was, I was in my first Broadway show. And it's just been work, 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 work ever since. And um, I can't imagine doing anything else. And I've never imagined doing anything else, which brings me to what's going on now, which is I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and it's so, it's such a challenge because I never really thought my whole industry would go away. So therefore I'm a little bit at a loss as how to, how to manage that. But um, no, I know theater will come back and um, I'm just really excited about being on stage again. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of leads right into our next question, which is, since we can't be in theaters right now, how are you finding that happiness? Ooh, it's it's been rough, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm so used to being creative and and having a project. So that's that that's been really difficult. Um, what have I been doing? I've been watching a lot of movies and shows. I've, <laughs> I've started to write. I wanna write a one woman show, but um, I really haven't found exactly how I wanna shape that yet. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as happiness, I mean, I got married. So that's a good thing. I got married um, in May. Tub. Thank you. <laughs> so I found happiness through that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're having fun, you know, we're, with each other 24 seven so that's, and we haven't killed each other. So that's good. Yeah. This um, is like a nice extended honeymoon, <laughs> right? Very extended. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, it is a struggle to find yeah. happiness when you can't do something that is such an integral part of who you are and how you express yourself. So I, I will not paint with, you know, happy colors cause it's been hard. I, and I'm not gonna lie yeah. about that. Yeah. And being honest about it is a great way to figure out how to move through it instead of just masking it. So Right, 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 right. I mean, I'm not letting myself completely fall apart here, but it, it's a struggle and each day is different. I don't know if you all find that. It, some days I'm, I'm really motivated and, and I can get a lot of things done and I feel really great about being creative. And then other days I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm just going to sit here and watch you know, the good place yeah. or something, you know, on, <laughs> yeah. you know, on, on Netflix, but you know, yeah. it depends. Yeah. I think I've definitely discovered during the last however many months, what those shows that make me escape my own head can be and what those yeah. shows that can boost or maybe help me go into those thoughts uh, are. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about your personal experience with breast cancer? Oh, sure. Well, it was in 2015 um, that I went to, I always went to for a routine mammogram sonogram um, every year because my insurance paid for it, but I didn't have a history of breast cancer. So it was never kind of on my radar that I was ever going to have an issue. Um, and they found a strange lump, like inside, I didn't feel it, but they saw something on my sonogram and they said they would like to do a biopsy. And that really freaked me out. Um, and actually the, the, when we did the, um, the sample that freaked me out more than the diagnosis because <laughs> not knowing was really hard. Um, I got a call a few days later 
And the doctor started by saying, how was your weekend? And when I got that call, I knew that it was not going to be good news. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh, because I was like, oh, he's easing into this. So I was diagnosed yeah. with invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, and I immediately went into, uh, let's fix this mode. And mm-hmm. the next day I had a, a, an appointment with a surgeon. And then the next day I had all my... Um, pre-ops, pre-operative um, tests done. So I could have a lumpectomy the very next week. Um, wow. So I had a lumpectomy and I had uh, the lymph nodes were taken, some lymph nodes were taken out to make sure it hadn't spread and it hadn't. I was very lucky. It was stage one, um, but I had to have radiation mm-hmm. um, after that for six weeks as well. So mm-hmm. I actually right the same week I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer, I had a final callback for something rotten on Broadway. (laughs) And I ended up booking it that week, which was really great um, because I knew that I could, I would have a job in the city. And when I started my radiation, I had just started the show. So Mm -hmm. my very first two months in something rotten, I was going to radiation every week or every day, sorry, for six weeks. But it ended up like being a really good thing because I had something to do every day. Something kind of took my mind off my breast cancer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, it almost kept, it kind of kept me going. Um, And there were just a few people in that show who knew about it. The girls in the dressing room knew about it and they were so supportive and lovely, Mm -hmm. but I didn't tell a lot of people because I just didn't want to be that new girl with breast cancer. So, um, so it was a really, it was almost, it was like a dream that it happened, you know what I mean? The way that it did in that mm-hmm. I felt so like I had such a group of supportive women around me. And like I said, I had this show to kind of propel me forward. So I didn't sit at home and freak out about it. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was my journey with that. But then I, um, after after radiation was over and the initial shock of it all was over, I went on a uh, medication that threw me into early menopause. So that's been a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have been yeah. there. Have um, been there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hot yeah. flashes. I still get yeah. them. I mean, it's crazy. It's they suck. the hormones. <laughs> and, yeah. They suck. And I remember having yeah. my first one. I was like, what's happening? Oh, this is what a hot flash is. And they're just nuts. Yeah. They're just crazy. So that, and then the mood swings and it's not, you know, I'm just going to get real personal here. I was on um, antidepressants beforehand. And then my antidepressants didn't work with the cancer drug tamoxifen that I was on. So I had to switch mm-hmm. around what that was on and that was screwing me up. I mean, it was, it's been a sure. journey. It has been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm cancer free really- now, five years. Which is amazing. Congratulations. And it's such a testament to what early detection can do and, and that it's not just a one-time thing. It is, it is something that can stay with you forever just because of the effect it does have on your body and that, that after effect and um, hormones are a very intimate thing to the body because they regulate the ins and outs and the freelancing life of a performer is already (laughs) extremely right. stressful and already plays on your mind so much that mm-hmm. to go through what you did and to be continually working throughout it is that takes such an act of, of grace and strength. So absolute oh, kudos you. to you. Well, thank you. You know, that getting that job when that happened, it was a huge weight off, off me because I was like, I know I have employment now too. I mean, and then yeah. we can talk about healthcare and how freaked out I yeah. am now. <laughs> that I'm going to lose yeah. my health care and I have this pre-existing yeah. condition now. Right, um, right. No, but it's, it's, it's so strange. Sometimes I, I get so, so private about it. I don't really tell a lot of people about it, but at the same time, I feel like women should know how important it is to get that mammogram slash yeah. sonogram every year, because you never know. I mean, um, if I may, I'm going to talk about a, a girl that I just worked with recently and I'm not going to name her, but we were talking and she hadn't had a mammogram and she's like, I'm going to go because of you. And guess what? 
she was diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer, and she had to have a lumpectomy and radiation. And she said to me, if you hadn't told me about your experience, I probably wouldn't have gone. And it could have been a yeah. lot worse. And it just, it made me feel so, so, so good about speaking up yeah. and, and telling people how important it is because you don't know, you don't know. And yeah. 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 It's, it's, thank you so much for being willing to share this with us and oh. to be sharing so much sure. of yourself with us. Oh, and it, sure. <laughs> it's all about helping other women have that awareness. Um, speaking of that support system, could you talk a little bit about your support system and how they helped you during treatment and recovery? Oh, sure. Um, well, I have the man who is my husband now. He was my boyfriend at the time. And honestly, in the beginning, he was kind of freaked out. Um, of course, he was freaked out, but he, he was so kind to me and took care of me. And that was, it was really great to have him. My family was there for me. Um, my mom, she was also really freaked out. Um, when I told her, I made sure that she had a glass of wine and we did it on zoom <laughs> or not. A, it was zoom didn't exist. FaceTime. Um, I, I got her really relaxed before I told her what was going on. Um, but she was very supportive. My friends that I told, I was very um, selective about who I told. But I will yeah. tell you the biggest source of strength for me was those girls in that dressing room at Something Rotten. Um, yeah. They kept it quiet so the rest of the cast didn't know. They didn't, you know, go around telling everybody. Um, they checked in on me every day. They would, you know, they would send me texts when I would go, to, like when I went to my first um radiation treatment they all sent me texts like you've got this and the best memory I have is when I was done with my radiation and they all knew it was my final one I came into the dressing room and I'll probably cry telling you this but they were playing <laughs> eye of the tiger um and not eye of the tiger but uh, I have the eye of the tiger the yeah, um uh, Katie Perry. Katie Perry. Yeah. Yes. And they got me a yes. yeah, roar. That's what it is. I <laughs> have the tiger. Listen to me. I'm from the 80s. Uh, um, roar. And they had gotten a cake and balloons. And it was just like this. They had a big oh. celebration for me. And that's when the rest of the cast found out because they were like, what's the big, what's happening in there? Why are you guys having a mm -hmm. party? And then I told every, you know, I told people in the, and they were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> But awesome. um, no, I just felt so loved and supported and seen, you know, and I thank goodness that I had, I had those women and that I had that show and it, it kind of saved me in a way, you know, it saved yeah. my spirit. Yeah. For people yeah. who don't, who are listening and watching, who maybe don't understand the ins and outs of how theater works, the people you share a dressing room with are kin to your college roommates. Uh, yeah. it's, it's more, pro you're in closer proximity than a cubicle at an office, but you see each other in all phases of dressed and undressed and you're spending all day, every day with them. And uh, to it's hard to hide anything that's going on in your life because you're spending so much time with people. They just, you just get to know each other very well. You can tell when someone's having a good day or not having a good day. So for those ladies to be able to take care of you, like a, I'm imagining like a big cave of like mama bears looking out for you. <laughs> so what it was, I mean, it yeah. really was. And I, and I honestly didn't know that I was going to t even tell them that I was going through this I, because I barely knew them. And one of the girls one day before my first radiation, it was like when I first joined the cast, I was again, I was getting dressed and she saw this scar that I have right here. And she asked me what it was. Well, what is that? And I was like, okay, I guess I tell her. And then suddenly she was like, oh my God, what you're going through this right now. We have to tell, we have to tell the girls, you know, we have to yeah. be here for you. The um, whole shuttle has to know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I was really grateful for that because I'm kind of that kind of person who just keeps everything to herself and it, and it encouraged me to share and it encouraged, you know, it encouraged that part of me. So yeah, I'm grateful. Well, sharing is a great way to spread awareness and especially uh, the more different people speak out, you never know who you'll reach. And even if it is just one person that, right. that saves one life. Exactly. Or no, it can I make really one more good. person aware. Exactly. And now she will make people aware. And you know what I mean? It, it kind of is like, pay, you know, it's like pay it forward or whatever, but 
when yeah. I knew that I had that kind of impact on her, she, and she said to me, you know, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have done that. So I'm so grateful. And then I was actually able to talk her through everything that I had gone through. And so she called me yeah. like all the time and was asking me questions. And I felt like I was of service to her. And I honestly wish that I'd had someone, <laughs> I'd had someone like me, you know, but someone that I knew <laughs> That could. Yeah. I'm so good. I wish I had someone like me. <laughs> no, um, but, but someone who'd been through it and someone who could tell me it was going to be okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, so I feel it feels good to be in that community. You know what I mean? Of supportive yeah. women. Yeah. Absolutely. As we end uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, what advice do you have for people? Oh my gosh, get your mammogram, get your sonogram every year. My mother famously said to me the year I was diagnosed, why do you go every year and get that? You don't have it in run, it doesn't run in your family. She said that to me. I love her so uh -huh. much, but I was like, Mom, it my insurance pays for it. I may as well do it. And yeah. thank goodness, you know, I mean, don't yeah. think just because it doesn't run in your family or, you know, I mean just throw that out the window. You've got to, you've got to take care of yourself. You never know. And, and just make sure that you get checked all the time. Cause it could make the huge, hugest difference in how you're treated. Yeah. 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 And as they make advancements with the technology for screening, it can detect more, it can detect earlier and it's less painful. <laughs> oh, totally. It's less invasive. I mean, just the, just the difference between the treatment that my friend got, um, five years. And I, she was telling me stuff. I'm like, well, I didn't get that. And I'm like, well, it's five years ago. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm jealous. Am I jealous of someone who's got breast cancer now? I mean, is that where I'm going with this? But that's how quickly we, you know, they make, they make advances. It's really incredible what they're able to do. Yeah. 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 And breast cancer awareness month has become this huge month. It's, it's always surprising to me each year, more and more organizations do things to be aware of it. Like I remember a couple however many years ago when the NFL started doing, like they would wear pink ribbons on their cleats or whatever, just to make awareness. Right. And you wouldn't think a bunch of burly men might care about it, but they have mothers and right. wives and sisters and daughters and men can get breast cancer too. Oh, they can. So it's and a, it's not talked it's, yeah. about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's in everybody's interest. And I think especially as um, our industry is having a lot going on right now with performers and access to healthcare based on, um, in our, in our industry theater performers, based on how often you work, it's how your, your health insurance coverage is tiered. Um, mm -hmm. So without work, a lot of people are, are struggling to think about the year ahead. And I hope that people um, are able to budget for the different cost of screenings, because those are, those are things worth saving up for. Yeah, definitely. And it's very, it's very important because again, like with, with my particular cancer and with a lot of cancers, you don't feel it. I, do the breast check every month, you know, in the shower, like you're supposed to do. It wasn't a lump that I felt. It wasn't anything I felt. It was in so in so far inside that it had to mm -hmm. be detected by a test. So yeah. 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 And as we wrap up, just a moment of appreciation for the people who read the imaging. They are the, oh, they are the lifesavers. They really, really are. I don't know how they do it. I'm like, they show me and I'm like, what? I don't know what I'm looking at. It's like that it's episode of Friends where Rachel can't find the baby on the ultrasound. It's like, you're yeah. like where is it in where there? Yeah. And they go, do you see that? I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Nope. Yeah. But. They're like, oh, it's right here. And you're like, where? Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. thank you so much. It, Terry, it's been so nice to see you, even though it's virtual, but thank you so much for being yes. here with us today and really opening up and, and helping celebrate breast cancer awareness uh, this month as we wrap up October. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And from all of us here at Happy News Network, I'm Kristen. I'm Shana. Have a Have happy a week. Have a happy day. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs>